one of the things that seems to be a source of constant fascination is this idea that whilst there may be tens of thousands of different individual influence and persuasion strategies, we can largely categorize the most successful of these strategies into one of just three core motivations, core desires inherent in each and every one of us. The first is this desire, this motivation to make efficient decisions in the most rewarding way possible. Uh, the second is this idea that we want to make decisions and behave in ways that affiliate us with others and gain their approval. And third, we want to make decisions and behave in ways that position us in the best possible light. One of the things that we know about goals that are motivating is that they really should have two things inherent in them. The first is that they should be sufficiently realistic to ensure that we reach that goal. That's the effective part of this core motivation. But there's another element that's going to be important in so far as we want to set ourselves goals that are sufficiently challenging that we gain that sense of accomplishment when we do achieve them. That's the, the rewarding piece. And the received wisdom to date has been that when we set a goal, we think about a single specific goal and aim for that. Let's say we want to lose three pounds of weight per week over a period of time. And it strikes me that that single specific goal doesn't perhaps optimally speak to these two core elements. A single specific goal is typically either realistic or challenging, uh, or oftentimes a compromise between the two, but rarely can a single uh, number goal achieve both these aspects. But what goal can is what we describe as a high-low goal. Um, so for example, would it be more effective if instead of saying, let's lose three pounds a week, of weight a week, we instead said, well, let's lose between two and four pounds a week and bracket that goal with a high-low number that averages the same as the single goal. And it turns out there's research that shows that this is a pretty effective change, a very small change that leads to a big difference. In these studies here, people in weight loss programs were assigned to either lose uh, three pounds of weight per week or two to four pounds of weight Per week. Now, the first thing that is important to recognize here is, is that when it comes to the specific weight loss each week, it wasn't that much of a difference. Although those that were given the high-low goal typically lost about a half a pound more per week. So over a 10-week period, that's five pounds. That's, that's worth having. But what's especially interesting about this small change and why it talks to this motivation is the persistence of that goal over time. Uh, only about a half of people enrolled on the program given that single goal then subsequently enrolled on future programs. But look at the difference when they are given this high-low goal. Same goal, but with a high and low characteristic. Some 60% increase in persistence of that goal over time. How many of you typically travel a lot and will stay in hotels? You've probably noticed on your travels those little cards that uh, are positioned in hotel bathrooms that encourage you to reuse your towels and linens. Interestingly, no hotel chain in the world says, please reuse your towels and linens while you stay in our hotel because it saves us cash. Instead, <laughs> what hotels typically do is they appeal to your desire to be a, a pro-environmental citizen. Please reuse your towels and linens for the sake of the environment. Consider, though, whether or not a small change that links to this idea of exchange, reciprocity, could be employed to increase towel reuse in hotels. And uh, in this instance, uh, a set of cards was positioned in certain hotel rooms that pointed out the, fa the following fact to guests. Dear guests, if you do reuse your towels and linens while you stay in our hotel, this hotel chain will make a contribution as a result of the savings we make towards an environmental concern. The uh, environmental appeal is a pretty effective one. About a third of people will reuse their towels and linens when asked to do so for the sake of the environment. We add this appeal. If you will do this, um, then we will uh, donate a certain percentage of the savings. And what we find is, is that towel reuse promptly goes down, and significantly down as well. Suddenly, people are having a towel party in their rooms. Um, why is this the case? You know, that doesn't seem to make sense. Well. Remember, it's this fundamental desire to affiliate and gain the approval of others through mutual exchange. And one of the things we know about this idea of mutual exchange is that it's typically activated by the person that goes first. 
And so in that regard, a third set of cards were positioned in hotel rooms where the hotel pointed out to guests, this is what we've already done for the environment. This is the contribution we've made. Please do your bit and help recover our expenses, in this instance, by reusing your towels. And in this instance, we get this very impressive increase. So the small thing here that will often lead to a big change is this idea of thinking about how we can further the advances of others. Give something first. That affiliates us to others. That increases the likelihood that we will gain their approval. And it increases our influence, especially if what we give first is something that's done in an unexpected or surprising way. A big challenge that we face, specifically here, actually, in the United Kingdom, um, our National Health Service has a problem that it's blighted by, and this is the idea of people who will make appointments at their GP surgeries, at their uh, hospital outpatients appointments, and then for whatever reason fail to show up. The current estimates we have of the cost of this problem uh, are somewhere in the region of about 800 million pounds. What one small change could we make to the way that an appointment is made? that could have an impact, could have a big impact. Well, in these series of studies uh, conducted here in the UK in GP surgeries and outpatient hospital appointments, we made one small change that required a little bit more active participation in the appointment making process. We all know what happens typically when we phone up our GP surgery and make an appointment. Assuming that we are staying online long enough to get through to someone, then um, we're given the next available appointment and then the phone is promptly put down so that that busy receptionist can get to the next call that's waiting in line. The small change we made was to simply ask receptionists after they had given the time and day of the appointment to that individual patient to pause and ask them to verbally repeat it back. Your appointment, Mr. Smith, is next Tuesday at 2.30. Wait for one moment the patient would repeat that back. Notice that the only investment there is perhaps an extra one, one and a half seconds in time, no costs involved whatsoever. And in that instance, we actually measure a modest but still significant reduction in subsequent no-shows. That's a three and a half percent reduction. Three and a half percent doesn't sound an awful lot, but if you consider that a three and a half percent reduction of an 800 million pound problem is many millions of pounds, there, I think, is a good demonstration of a small thing that made a particularly big difference. We didn't stop there, though, with these studies. We also went one stage further and tested another strategy aligned to this idea of wanting to be seen in the best possible light. How many of you, just by way of a show of hands, when you've been uh, at an optician's or a dentist's or a doctor's, have been given one of those little appointment cards as a reminder? Uh, you know, many of you in the room. Who writes the details on those cards? Yeah, the receptionist, the physician, the nurse, whoever it may be. Turns out that's the wrong person. In these studies, when we simply asked the healthcare professional, the nurse, the receptionist concerned, to hand the blank card with the pen to the individual patient so that they could write down their own appointment details. That's a commitment now that requires them to live up to in order to be seen in the best possible light. It's also a commitment that was costless for us to activate and led to a pretty impressive 18% reduction in no-shows. Now we're not talking about tens of millions of pounds, we're talking about potentially over a hundred million pounds worth of savings by simply making this small change that in this instance makes uh, a huge difference. <laughs>